Hey guys, welcome back to the 30 day poetry challenge. It is day eight and it is a very special day, not just because it is day eight, but because it is my birthday. Happy birthday to me, I'm 43 years old today. And because it is my birthday, I have given myself permission to do one of my favorite things, read love poems. <laughs> I love, love poetry because I'm a big romantic softy and love poems are just real high up on my list and uh, I love I love brief poems too I when I was thinking about doing love poetry I thought about going into sonnets you know um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning's how do I love thee let me count the ways I thought of going into Shakespeare, so I compare thee to a summer day, but I thought that's a little bit of a commitment for me today. And it's my birthday, so we'll do sonnets later. <laughs> but now, um, I would just like to talk about love poems. And um, as I said, I like, I like brief poems. I like um, something that is short and gets to the heart of whatever emotion or sentiment um, it's about right away, you know, and it's easy to take in and, and, and process. Um, I don't know if you've been following me on Brave Creative Me or the 30 Day Poetry Challenge page, but for a while I have been doing my own um, 30 Day Poetry Challenge. I'm on day, oh gosh, I'm on day 28 now. I only have a few to go. And what I do is I take a photo and I kind of think about what I want to say all day. And then when I get there and I put text on top of the photo, I know how the photo relates. So again, it's a mixed media thing. Um, and I know exactly what I want to say and I can distill it and distill it. So it has a real, a real punch to it. Um, well, yesterday I did a poem on a roast chicken because <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time in it felt kind of sassy so you can go see my roast chicken poem if you want <laughs> on Facebook um, but uh, yeah the brevity is, is sometimes a nice challenge just really think about the words that you're using um, and for my first example of that is a collection of poetry called chasers of the light um, by Tyler Knott Gregson and I picked this book up when I was on my trip to New York what seems a million years ago and these are really special because they're poems from the typewriter series so I want to read you the back of the book. One day while browsing an antique store in Helena Montana photographer Tyler Knott Gregson stumbled upon a vintage Remington typewriter for sale. I think they're rather expensive. Standing up and using a page from a broken book he was buying for two dollars, he typed a poem without thinking, without planning, and without the ability to revise anything. He fell in love. That is valid, valid love, my friends. And I love the way that this book looks visually. He just went and off the cuff, there's a couple of other things he does. He does black out. He does black out poetry as well on top of on top of things, and he does use photos. So we've got another mixed media example here too. But he just finds scraps of paper and sits down and in however long it takes him distills something to this big, and it has that emotional grab, you know. So I want to read you. There's two of his that I want to read you. You giggle softly, and the sound of laughter leaping from your lungs slows me to a crawl. That laugh, my God, that laugh refills all that spilled from me. It is the oxygen mask to the plane crash I have always been. What? 
I think that's very powerful. It's definitely a good example of somebody pouring their heart out in a very short space of time and, and time that was available and space that was available. He's actually, he's giving him some nice, he's giving himself some really nice structure to work with in deciding to do this. Um, you know, here, the other part of love poems, there's the love poems that are the current ones and there's the love poems that are the after love poems, the breakup poems, like the breakup songs. I do not know if I will ever be complete, but I know whatever I am, you will always be the rest of me. <sighs> Those are the kind of things you say when love is severed. So brief punchy poems about love. Fantastic. So there's another one that I want to read to you that is The Sex Lives of Monsters by Helen Marshall. And um, I picked this up at, um, oh, it's the winner of the 2012 Aurora Award. I picked it up at a, at a little book launch, um, a small book press. And I picked it up and I absolutely love it because she does amazing things with the theme, with themes of classic, with themes of, um, of classic mythology, literature. And, uh, and this particular poem has Greek in it and I do not want to butcher it. So I am going to skip over the Greek <laughs> and um, know that the translation of what the Greek is, is is actually in the poem for the most part. But I do want you to enjoy it because it's an amazing poem. One Quarter Gorgon. When we make love, it is in darkness or with blindfolds. I have learned so well the sinuous curves of hips and thighs, mapping subterranean passages, or the high, breathy places where eagles nest. I know her best by hand, by finger touch, the sweetness of incense on my lips. Sometimes she whispers in Greek, the words coiling like snakes in my throat. Her language is so secret. Our house has no mirrors, and I can see myself only in her words. Today, you are beautiful. Anasamu, today you wear sunlight in your hair. I would tangle my hands in you to grow warm and brown from kissing. I do not know how pale she is. You break so quickly, she tells me, like a black earthen kylix. You are a child. You are a child. I am so old that you cannot love me. I love you like a child. When her hands wind behind my head and my lips taste myrrh and orange on her skin, I feel the emulation of her gaze, the hot, slick love of the Gorgon, and she is beautiful. Afterward, she whispers, I looked deep into your eyes and I saw our future. I am transfixed. So if you didn't catch the reference to Gorgon, Gorgon is Medusa. And I, I love the idea of, of taking a powerful character like Medusa and moving her from, from villain to lover. And what would it be like for someone to, to love a person like that? Because she wasn't always Medusa. She was turned into Medusa. <laughs> she was originally just a woman. Um, uh, a Gorgon, but a woman. And I love the way that it gets into you, the feeling of the body as, as she describes the different parts of the body. And it really, it gives you the sense that you are, um, that you are loving by touch, um, someone yourself just by reading this poem and um and the visceral use of of taste and smell is wonderful the myrrh and the orange and the feeling of of sunlight it's just uh it's just a wonderful poem so find something that you are intensely 
grateful for, something that makes you say, I love that. I love that person, that place, that thing, whatever it is, dive into that. Dive into what does it feel like to love that thing and tell us. And as a side note, I'm also accepting love poems as gifts. <laughs> Send them directly to uh, to um, bravecreativekelly at gmail.com. Um, and just, just have fun with this one. I, I certainly do. And I'm sure I'll be posting a love poem later on top of a picture of my birthday cake. Yes. All right. Uh, take care. And I will see you tomorrow for day nine. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful journey into poetry. And I'd like to wish you good luck with your own writing and poetry projects. Please subscribe so you don't miss a day. And thank you so much.